man, oh man, that boy Boots Ennis is a problem. Um, he just had a fight um, last night against uh, Lippy Nets, you know, in a, in a big time step up fight um, for him, especially compared to the, um, the competition that he's facing. Um, I mean, first of all, people, I don't know, some people have this weird, you know, perception that, you know, he's just on Showtime and he's just doing his own thing by himself. Um, no, um, I, I think I even heard somebody say that, oh, you know, he was able to do this headline a fight last night he did without Al, without Al Heyman. That was a PBC card. If you see it on it, it says, it says Showtime PBC. You know, Al Heyman is putting him on PBC cards that he, you know, that's what he's doing. These are not some separate thing that he's doing, you know, so they're working in conjointness up with, up with each other. I mean, his, and his promoter has talked about it as well. Um, that, you know, pretty much he used to work with um, with uh, Top Rank, you know, a lot and with Bob Arum. He's the one who let everybody know that they had the whole um, N, uh, NBF rules um, back in Top Rank. Um, so he's working, um, obviously, with Boots, and he brought Boots, you know, to PBC, and he brought him basically working in um, conjointly with Al Heyman. You know, just like a lot of other promoters, some other promoters do as well. Like uh, David Benavides, he's not, you know, technically an Al Heyman fighter. He's signed to another promoter. Um, what's his name also? Uh, uh, Luis Ortiz. Um, same thing. Um, what's his name also? Uh, what's that kid's name? That just fought uh, Jamel Charlo. Rosario. Same type of situation. You know, so there are certain people who are not necessarily signed directly to Al Heyman. You know, or who, you know, decisions are made conjointly with another promoter that basically has rights to them that work together. And Ennis is one of those guys, you know. Um, but, you know, just want to get that out the way. And Lipkinitz is a PBC fighter. He's an Al Heyman fighter. So to say that Al Heyman wasn't involved in some way is kind of asinine because everything it basically, the whole last night doesn't happen without him, basically. You know, so, um, but... You know, that to the side, you know, he had a great performance. Um, he went out there, um, boxed, you know, great movement, um, great shot placement. Um, you see how, you know, he, he can fight orthodox, he can fight southpaw, um, you know, knows how to get out, you know, get out the way of punches, you know, great inside, outside movement. Um, and when he had to fight on the inside, when Lippin tried to push him, you know, the metal and really get into him, he showed that he got a freaking inside game. He has a mean inside game. That's when Lippiness actually got hurt the worst is when he tried to do that. You know, so as far as his kill set's concerned, as f from what we've seen so far, he's shown that he has it all. You know, he has it all when it comes to the actual skills. Boy's a beast, you know, and um, got to give him a lot of respect for that. And I think he passed the test um, that was put in front of him with flying colors, you know, Um a lot of these other guys are being praised. You know, they're trying to compare them to all the best out there, saying they can beat the best. And it's like, I'm looking at like, if these guys are going 10, 12 rounds with guys that have no business, you know what I'm saying, being in there with them for 12 rounds. Oh, this guy can beat Javante Tank Davis, yet he's going 12 rounds against a dude that wouldn't last two rounds against Javante Tank Davis. You know, and they're massively bigger than the guys that they're facing. So it's kind of like, well, okay. <laughs> Like, all right, <laughs> you know, if we say so, you know. But um, yeah, he he showed that he's, you know, I think heads and heels above, you know, most of the guys um, you know, that are that of that age, pretty much that are coming up. Um so gotta give him a lot of respect for that, you know, what he you know, what he did and what he showed. You know, he wasn't even Ortiz Jr. Yeah, Ortiz Jr. won his fight, but we see what he looked like. We saw the issues that he had in that fight. How you know, how he almost got he, how he got hurt in that fight got all lumped up in that fight in his last fight against hooker you know nothing of that sort was happening um when it came to to uh to ennis and nothing that we saw from that ennis fight that says he's not ready to fight the best out there you know you see you know nothing you know ortiz says he's ready so like i told somebody that you know that i was commenting with in one of my videos like if he believes it, i don't think he's ready but shoot doesn't matter what i think if he wants to go fight you know terrence croft and they can make that fight you go ahead and fight him and let's see if you can you know if you can, if you can beat him you know you got the right to go fight him you know you got the you know shoot 
you know, if you lose, you lose. If you win, then you prove me wrong. I look like an idiot. I don't look like an idiot, but you know, I, you prove me wrong. I, shoot, I was wrong. If you lose, okay, cool. You regroup, you progress, you get better, and you come back and you fight another day. You know, and uh, when it comes to Ennis, um, I think he's just straight up shown that he's ready. He's ready to take on the top guys. Now, I'm not going to go as far as some people, you know, are going and saying that, oh, he can beat everybody at 147. He can beat everybody at 154. He can stop everybody at 154, stop everybody at 147. I'm not going that far, you know. I can understand people maybe having that train of thought if he just completely ran through lippiness in like two rounds. I could see that, you know. Some people believe that he can beat the likes of uh, Jamel Charlo. Lippiness isn't going past one round against Charlo. He's getting... He might not make it home. You know, it's, it's a completely different... You're talking about completely different level of fighters. You know what I mean? And I've always been in the mindset where I'm like, I want to enjoy these fighters and enjoy their journey. And we'll see where they end up. As they go from step to step to step, I'll give them their, prog you know, their props for it. And it's like, cool, let's progress to the next level. And we'll see how they do there. So, you know, to, so, so to just jump that far ahead to say that he can just beat all these guys now or destroy all these guys and run through all these guys, I think that's off base. You know, let's see what, he, you know, but I do believe he's ready for the Ugas's. He's ready for the Sean Porters, the Keith Thurmans, the Earl Spencers. He, do I know if he's, do, do I think, know if he's going to beat any of those guys, the Terrence Crawfords? He's there. These are the next fights for him. Do I know if he's going to beat these guys or not? I don't know. You know, I don't know. I believe he has the ability to beat most of these guys. You know, I believe him and Earl Spence, that when that happens, because I think that's going to happen, that's going to be one of the most anticipated fights in a long time. In a long time. Where if he continues to show what he's been showing, especially if he step fights these other guys and continues doing what he's he's been showing us, I don't know who wins that fight then. There's going to be a situation where I don't know who wins that fight. And I don't care how much it is, I'm paying to watch that. You know? And the progression and the progress that this guy's making right now, and the way people are becoming hyped up about him and talking about him, this is the reason why I said he doesn't need Canelo Alvarez. This is why I said that he doesn't need to jump up all the way up to 160 pounds, basically two weight classes, you know, to face a Canelo Alvarez. He doesn't need to do that. You know, all these big fights are being built up right now at 147 pounds for him you know right now we're gonna jump up two weight classes to take 40 percent against this dude this big at dude who god knows what he has in the system because we've seen what happened with tests before that's stupid in my opinion other people allowed to have their opinion but that's in my opinion so let's i think he should say at 147 you know, and just like the way Sean Porter's been able to stay at 147, if he's focused, if he's disciplined, he can stay at that weight class for a couple of years. He just has to be focused and disciplined when it comes to his nutrition the same way Sean Porter is. Because if Sean Porter wasn't disciplined the way it is, he is, he would not be a 147-pounder. Hell no. But he is. And there's no reason for him to go to 154 pounds. Jamel's going to have all the belts at 154 pounds soon. And he's going to stay up there for a while. He's going to stay at 154 for a while, pretty much just, you know, fighting all the contenders. So, and you're not going to fight Jamel Charlo. He's your, you know, you fight in the same place with him. You basically would have to, you know, either he or you would have to leave that trainer. And you'd have to sever that relationship in order to make that fight happen. That's not going to happen. There's other things that are more important than money. He has plenty of money. He's financially secure for the rest of his life. So to, to, to destroy relationships like that over money, that's just stupid. That's just dumb. Especially when you're already in a great place and you got incredible fights that are there and available for you at 147 pounds in a place where you can reign while your brother does his thing at 154. So, Ortiz Jr., Ennis, these are the fights that are going to be available for Earl Spence. And I don't know, I don't believe Ennis is going to be able to get that Terrence Crawford fight, even if he pushes the issue just due to the fact it's called the WBO What Bob Orders for a reason Because in, what I would love Would be for him to try to go after the WBO belt And if he's able to beat Terrence Crawford With that, then he can come back And then we can have a big, huge, undisputed match On PB, you know what I'm saying? I guess, I guess, uh, I guess Earl Spence 
and then we get that undisputed champion, we would be in that particular space, which would be great for boxing and it'll be great for us. You know, but unfortunately, since it's a what Bob Waters belt, I just I don't see that being ordered. Just like I don't see Terrence Crawford versus uh, uh, Sean Porter being ordered. Just like uh, Terrence Crawford versus Danny Garcia wasn't ordered. This says that you know Terrence Crawford versus Ennis. I don't think that would be a fight that would be ordered either. I don't, you know, at all. So two, three fights, probably three fights from now. I think um, Earl Spence probably going to take on. Um, Ugas next. After that, I see him doing probably a rematch against uh, Sean Porter. By then, I think uh, Keith Thurman would have probably had one, two fights in, uh, which is going to end up making a big, huge fight between him and Earl Spence. So I see that fight happening. And after that fight happens, I think the next fight for him would be um, Earl Spence versus Ennis in a fight that's going to do half a million to 700,000 pay-per-views. I think Ennis will have come up and he will progress in popularity to that level by then. In the next 12 months, he keeps doing what he's doing. He stays active. Ennis will have surpassed all the young dudes when it comes to popularity, pretty much. All of them. I think that's where it's going to be, you know. And he's making the same progression as Earl Spence did. He just has to be active. Um, stay promoting yourself. And once things open up, go to the fights, do the interviews, um, just like Earl Spence did. And when it's time, <laughs> we're going to get one of the great fights that, you know, you know, well, at least one of them, we're going to get one of the great fights that, you know, we would, could be looking forward to. This is a fight that we can get. And this is the biggest fight that can be made right now, I believe, in the welterweight division. That's realistic. That's realistic. In about 12 months, about a year or so, a little bit over a year. I think a year and a half, about a year, year and a half, a year, this will be the biggest fight, Earl Spence versus Ennis, but a lot is going to have to go <laughs> happen between now and then for it to come to fruition, but um, hats off to him, um, great performance, and shoot, when he fights, you definitely know you got to tune in, but for now, like, subscribe, share, I'm out.